guys in this video we will start looking at how we can go about extracting data from our tables in the previous video we were inserting records and we inserted up to probably about 10 or so records and now we want to actually start pulling them back and manipulating the data so we have our script page open and we know that the first thing that we do is to specify which database it is that we're about to run the script against. Up until now, I would have shown you that you have the use keyword where you say use, and then you give it the database name. Um, since we're using the editor, I'm going to show you that this drop down up here that says master, and it will say master because master, which is a system database, is the default database that is going to be selected for any script. We can actually use this drop down box and we will see all the databases listed there. So if we click school, then it changes the context of our query without us having to write use school. So you can use either one. Personally, I prefer to write use school because if it goes on another machine and then by default it goes to master, then it knows when the script executes, it uses school as opposed to leaving it up to memory to change this when you're about to execute the script and then you may end up executing a possibly destructive script against the wrong database. So be mindful of that. But of course, for this course, I want you to be very versatile so you can use either method. So I'm going to stick to the evil I know and use school. And to get the IntelliSense, you can press Control and Space, but you probably know that already since you've gone through all the keyboard shortcuts. And you will see that it actually gives you all the suggestions and helps you to complete certain statements faster. Now, today we'll be looking at the select statement. So we've gone through Create, we've gone through Insert Into, and now we're looking at Select. And select is doing exactly what the name suggests. It's selecting data from a table. And that is exactly what the query line looks like. Select, and then what data do you want? Do you want the first name? Do you want the last name? Or do you want everything in the table? So if you want specific columns, you can write them out. In this situation, we want all columns. So they give us a shortcut for all in the form of an asterisk which allows us to say select all. So the asterisk is synonymous with all. And that means all columns from, and then we specify the table and we want students. That is how we're going to get all of the student records in our students table. After executing the query, we see here that our results have come back and everything is as we saw in our previous video. However, in this view, we're not able to click in and edit any of these records. So the select is really just to read the data. So when you run a select command, you're just reading the data for a presentation, maybe for reports. It's just giving you in a grid format and you can actually change that. The options are here to change the results to file or to change the results to text. So I can just click that and then re-execute the query and then just show you the difference in the results. So you actually get it in text form instead of a table format. And then file would actually export it to an RPT file. So we can just leave it on grid as the most, that's the most common and that's the default one. And we execute and we see it in grid format. Once again, it is not editable. Now let's start looking at some variations of this select statement. So I'm just going to remove this one. And then what if I wanted all the students, I only wanted first names and last names. I didn't want to see the ID that's auto-generated. I didn't want to see their date of birth or their enrollment date. I just wanted to see first name and last name. So I would still use select and in this occasion, I don't want to see all the columns. I just want two columns. So I want first name, and then I comma separate all of the columns that I'm specifying. So first name, comma, last name, and then we say from students, and then all of those errors go away because now it knows that first name and last name come from students. So we execute once again, and we see that our result set now only reflects those two columns, first name and last name. 
Now, if we're actually pulling these data points for reports, and I'm just going to add enrollment date to this, so enrollment date, and we want to see all of the students and their enrollment dates. But then we want to export this to Excel and we want sensible looking column names. First name is not, you know, reader friendly. It has a common F and common N and it's one word. First name is not one word, last name is not one word. But because we're discouraged from using spaces in creating our column names, we didn't write first space name. But when we print it out in our grid, we actually want the column names to look more presentable. So what we can do is say as, and then we can write the string that we would like to be printed for the column name. You actually can write it without the as and using the square bracket, just say last name. So I'm doing it both ways so you can see all of your options. So the as keyword is actually optional. You can put it here. All right. And then enrollment dates, like we discussed, could look kind of convoluted and confusing. So I'm just going to bring that to the next line and I'll say enrollment date. And then we execute this. And then if we look at the headings, we'll see first space name, last space name and enrollment date all looking more presentable and human readable. Once again, we can always break our lines because SQL will know where a statement starts and ends. So if you need to do this just to see everything more clearly, you have your keyword column and it's alias. This is what we call an alias, comma, column, alias, comma, column, alias. And then that's one of the advantages of that square bracket because if it is a case where you inadvertently created a column with a space in the name, then you could actually use the square bracket to still operate. But then that's not good practice. I don't like doing it and I'm not recommending it. So just treat your, your column names like this. Either use one word like this in all lowercase. Use your underscore to separate the names, the, the words, or camel case them. But then ultimately for presentation, you will want to use the aliases so that your columns come out looking better. So let's say you had to run this report. Your, your administrator is saying, hey, I need this report. You print it, you put on all the aliases, and then you need it in Excel. You can actually just right click here in the corner. So by clicking in the corner, it actually selects all the data. And then you can just right click and you can copy and it will copy it in tabular format and you can paste it in Excel, or you can actually save the results as, and the most common thing is CSV, uh, which can be opened in Excel anyway. So that's how you would go about exporting an extraction from the database to a file for reporting purposes. So let's try another thing. And you can actually run multiple selects in one script what it will do is separate the results. So I want to say select star from courses. I didn't enter any courses. I'm not sure if you did, but when I execute this, I'm expecting to see something saying there is no record in the database. So you see here, when you, when you have more multiple selects, you'll see the different sections for each grid result. So we see up here, that's our first select. And then down here, we see the results from our second select, which we have nothing. And also take note of the fact that all of the column names are coming back as they were created. So by using the star, you're, you're not afforded the opportunity to set some aliases. So you probably want to spell out your columns and set aliases for when you're going to be exporting the data for another human being to read. So when we get back, we'll start looking at more advanced extraction techniques and how we can go about filtering and selecting only some records and excluding others.